All right, everybody. This hopefully is the last time that this is going to happen. So I got Dubnium. I actually found Dubnium now because I have a better periodic table. Dubnium is number 105. So I'm going to do the noble gas notation. I'm going to look at the preceding noble gas, which is radon in brackets, which is number 86. So then I've got to look at 87 and 88. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So they are 7, S2 for those for 87 and 88. And then 89 through uh, 103 is, what is that, 5, F14. And then I've got 104 to 105, and that would be, um, oops, I got that. So then I've got my Ds in there. So and then I have, what is that, 6, D, 1, 2, 3, 6, D, 3. So remember, the F, the S block is 1 less or 1 higher, whatever you want to do, think of it. And this is 2 less. Okay? So it's a lot shorter than writing out all 105 of W. Positive ions lose valence electrons, and negative ions gain valence electrons. So if I have aluminum plus 3, that means it's going to lose 3 electrons. So if aluminum normally has 13 and it's going to lose them, it's instead going to end up with 10 and be just like neon. So if I have 10 electrons, I'm going to start with 1s2 for the top row, 2s2, and then 2p6. And I'd like to point out something here. 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 10, and that's the right number of electrons, so I'm done. Okay, so there's nothing special that indicates that it's negative. It's just you know that it's aluminum that has this. Okay, neon. Neon has no charge. It's a noble gas. Noble gases tend to not have charges. In the far right hand column, one s two, two s two, two p six. Hey, they're the same electron configurations. Oh, that's the definition of isoelectronic. Two um, things have the same. electron configuration. Right. S negative 2. Now, S negative 2. Now, if you're negative 2, that means you have two more electrons than you did when you started. So sulfur has 16, plus 2 is 18. So I'm going to stop at argon. So it's going to be just like, it's going to be isoelectronic with argon. So S negative, oh, it's, this, I guess this just says, is isoelectronic with what? Positive ions. So it's like argon. So which ones are going to make argon? Well, that means which ones will have 20 electrons. So what, no, I'm sorry, we'll have 18 electrons. So I look around it, and there aren't positive ones around there. So K positive will do it, CA plus 2 will do it, and then GA plus 3 will do it. And those are the ones that will be isoelectronic. Okay? The positive are metals make positive ions, and nonmetals don't. Bohr says electrons can jump up, jump around, jump around. This breaks the off-bar principle where you fill the lowest energy one first. But it happens. You add energy, it jumps up. So give the first excited state for silicon. Okay, so noble gas configuration. So silicon's preceding noble gas is neon. Okay. So it should be neon 3s2, 3p2, but I have an excited one. So one of these p's is so excited, one of them, it jumps to the next level. And what comes after 2p? Why, that's 3s1. And that's the excited silicon. Give the first excited state for chromium noble. Now, chromium is a noble gas, but I can't use it. I cannot just say, oh, chromium and brick, and that's it. Nope. You get the preceding noble gas, which is argon. And so then I have 4s2, 3d10, 4p6 is argon. But now I've got to excite it. So, one of them is going to go up to the next level, which is going to be 5s1. So it just jumps up one level. How exciting, how exciting. A few more rules about electrons. There's Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. Electrons come in bundles of two called orbitals. Okay? So like s, you know it has two, that's one orbital. And it would look like this. Orbitals of equal energy will put one electron in each before anyone gets full. So if I have three orbitals of equal energy, and I'm going to put five electrons in it, it feels like this. One, two, three. Aw, everybody got one. Aw, helping Hund. Aw, helping Hund. Okay. This is a real sign at U of I. Urinal choices, you should always choose the urinal, which gives both you and other people in the bathroom the most buffer room. So if here are your stall choices, and this works for dudes, 
if someone is right here, you do not go right to the spot right here. You spread out some. You need that buffer spot to go through it. So you leave that empty space, and then you can fill in the rest. But don't use the stall unless you have to. Paul exclusion principle. No two electrons can be in the exact same place at the exact same time. Duh. But you need to know that. Orbital notation for nitrogen. Notice I have 1s2, 2s2, 2p something. Okay. So if I look at the electron configuration of nitrogen, um, nitrogen has seven electrons. So it's going to have 1s2. Notice that's one orbital. 2s2. That's the next orbital. There's four. Five, six, seven. So electrons are arrows in boxes of orbitals, kind of. Orbital notation of magnesium. Now magnesium has 12 electrons. So if I think of or write out its electron configuration first, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, which hopefully you're getting better at that. Um, 1s, oops, 1s, 2s. Two p. Now notice I start at the lowest level and I keep going up. And with two p six, I fill it as up, up, up. Thank you, Hund. Down, down, down. And then I have three s two, three s, and all done. Half full and full stability. Being full means you are stable. Being half full means you are pretty stable. Everything else is terrible. So here's my six pack example. If I am carrying a six-pack of Diet Coke, as I always do, on my fishing trips and my six-pack cooler, if I move it this way, does it get all shooken up and explode when it opens? Nope. If I move it this way, does it all get shooken up and not happen? Nope. So, but what if I had one can in here? If I moved it this way, would it go, bam, and move it this way, bam, and what happens? I spill Diet Coke all over myself. Oh, how sad. So, full is good. D4, D9, D don't, and let me show you where that comes in. So you want to write down D4, D9, D don't, and let me show you where that comes from. Chromium and copper. So chromium has um, 24 electrons. So if I want to do the orbital diagrams of chromium, I'm going to do 1s, 2s, 2p, p holds 6, so that's 3 orbitals, 1, 2, Three, four, five, six. That's chromium, and then a three s up, down, three p up, up, up. Thank you, Hund. Down, 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 and then four s. And then what comes after four s is three d, and it has five orbitals. And chromium has four. See how that's almost half full. Remember, half full is wonderful. And full is wonderful. Everything else stinks. So right now, chromium stinks. But this S is full. So what happens is one of these electrons goes and does that. So there's no such thing as D4. So when I say D4, D9, D don't, what happens is this, you thought it was going to be 4S2, 3D4, but no, 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 no. What really happens is 4s1, 3d5. Why? Because then your d has half full stability, which is wonderful. Kind of like if you won $10 million, you might give your best friend $10,000. You'd help him out a little bit. Now, you wouldn't give a stranger $10,000. Maybe you'd give your chemistry teacher $10,000, but you wouldn't do the other ones. Okay? That's chromium. Copper is same, 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 same. But when you get to 4s, that's all the same. And then 3d. You've got up, down, and then copper has nine. So up, 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 up. Thank you, Hund. Down, 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 empty. So can you see how, again, this electron, with a little bit of help, will help his little buddy out to go right there. So D4, D9, D don't. It becomes 4S1. 3d10. I suppose I should use the noble gas that's preceding that. I believe it's argon, but I am not sure. It is argon. So that is the argon one for that. Okay, so d4 and d9 is d wrong. So is an orbital really a box? No, it's a cloud. 
That's the shape of a sphere. D is a dumbbell. Believe it or not, this is what they call dumbbells. And D is complex, F is complexer, and a grade you want to avoid. And you'll see some pictures in class. Magnetism. Paramagnetic means you have single electrons. So if I have my orbitals here, if I have anything paramagnetic, 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 diamagnetic. So that's it. Review S, B, D, F, woo, I know my blocks. S, woo, P, yeah, oops, by the way, the S1 over here is an S. B, D, woo, hoo, hoo, F, whoa, over here. Noble is shorter and your friend. Valence electrons are outer S and P only. Ions are isoelectronic with some other ions in the atom. Orbitals are like boxes but are really weird shapes. D4, D9, D don't. Goodbye, don't upset my haunted computer. Woo.